if as long as any African government tries to make redress of the colonial injustices, you you find that the same Europeans, the same EU, the the likes of EU, NATO, and the US, they they then term these people terrorists and uh, human rights violators. In other words, one one thing that is prevalent, the trend that we commonly see is that what is regarded as human rights by the EU, by 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 the United States, and by white dominant racist whites is is Africa is 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 white white rights. Any any white person is regarded as more superior to a black person, and we see that being propagated by what we call coconuts or clever blacks, clever blacks today or colonial clicks, so to speak. Uh, These so-called learned blacks. Uh, who also claim the same and 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 try to wink at the colonial injustices and say let bygones be bygones. But if 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 the system is going to be perpetuating white privilege, it 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 means that same system is continuing to perpetuate black oppression. And it, it, if if we indeed we need to respect human rights, we must start where the human rights were violated in the first place, and that was. When the land was called, the land was dispossessed from the right owners by force, use of force, by the way, brutal force, by the way, and 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 these are the systems that we see being upheld today, and 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 now by virtue of having so-called political independence, we have called let spades, let 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 the bygones be bygones. It must not be misconstrued for being naive. Uh, and 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 for, for 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 not being wise or not being intelligent on the part of the of the African native, it simply seems and it serves to show that black natives are not violent, they are not segregatory, they 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 are benevolent, and we are very much humane. The spirit of Ubuntu that, that is, if you if you may please to say so in the African context. In other words, we regard whites as fellow human beings, but the injustices of the past must be corrected and, and redressed. And I don't think that would be uh, tantamount to us being racist, us being anti-white. No, we are simply saying, let those injustices be addressed. Let there be equal distribution of the, of the resources, be it them land, natural, or even industrial. So we need to have that equality and not perpetuate a system that privilege, privileges a few. Because you see, land has been commodified, land has been um, um, taken into the Bill of Rights and it has been made uh, so-called property rights. Now, if you really want to remake the redress of the past, you are termed as being a violator of property rights. But what about the property rights of the native Africans when colonialism took place? Are they not important? Are they are they less human in that context and more important when it comes and applies to our white counterparts today? So these are important discourses that we need to look at, that we need to to really um, uh, uh, you know pursue. If you look at the South African context at the, at the moment what Steve Biko fought for and what the system and what we find now. South Africa is one of the most unequal countries in the world, but uh, they have the political independence, but the political independence without economic independence is no independence at all. That's true. That's true. It's only that it depends on from what lens are you see the reality. Because like he did Indeed. say, um, mm. when the European talk about justice, they are basically saying what uh, Dr. Ben had said, that they are talking of just this, not justice. Mm. Because justice <laughs> is supposed to be fair, and it's fair yes. all the time, and it's fair to everyone. But the European cannot take that. Because if it is actually justice that they want, and that is what Americans start for, stand for, it means it is wrong for you to go and take what does not belong to you in another man's land. How do you justify that? So we are never going to get justice. We are going to get just this. And when they also say that uh, 
a human right and the rest of it. I think you concluded there. That is where it's going to remain. That we Europeans, the West, are forcing everybody in the world to see the reality from their point of view. That that is the only reality. And of course, that is not only wrong, but it's also dangerous to our collective human history and survival. Because human being, our history, our common existence is not based on one point of view. It's based on diverse point of view. We must break those one into it, otherwise that is going to be a catastrophe. Anyway, mm -hmm. we're not even going to take that issue today. Um, I'm looking at the person of Steve Batu Biko. Um, let's look at a bit of his philosophy. How do you describe his philosophy? Sort of what guide his action, the principle? Help me with that. Yeah, he, his, 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 his philosophy was mostly guided by um, the respect of the, the dignity of the African person. By, I mean, physically, if you look at the African person, black is beautiful, was the slogan of the black conscious movement. So you find that when when he moved out of, when he resigned from NUSAS, he then uh, co-founded the South African Students Organization. And in, in, in his quest and his, in his path, he opposed the anti-white hatred and had white friends in particular. So it's, it's very important that whenever we, we, we speak about white people, it's not um, that we are talking about anti uh, anti-whites were not against white people. No, we're talking about an ideology, a philosophy that he pushed, um, the, the, the fight that he fought, the system that he tried to dismantle to make sure that um, the, the black natives are regarded as human beings and given and accorded that dignity, which is only natural, you know. And then uh, from the South African Students Organization, he went on to form what is known as the Black Conscious Movement. So the Black Conscious Movement had a, had a slogan which they pushed, and the slogan was, Black is beautiful. My hair is beautiful as it is. My skin is beautiful as it is. The tone of my skin is beautiful. And, 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 and the skin color, my skin color is not a brain pigmentation. You look at me as I am, as a human being. Regard me for who I am and what I am capable of doing. Regard me on basis of my capabilities, not on the basis of my skin color, not on the basis of my um, on, on the and the type of the type of my hair, you know. And excuse me, this is what he was pushing in the Black Conscious Movement. That was the philosophy of the Black Conscious Movement, which later on formed the basis then for, for other movements to gain ground. So you find that the Black Conscious Movement, because it was an ideology, it, it became popular even with um, school-going kids. The learners themselves, it permeated the society. It became very popular. And that, that on its own, initially when he was pushing the Black Consciousness, you find that uh, the apartheid government uh, sort of supported him because they were segregation, segregatory in nature, and they wanted that separatist kind of um, uh, situation whereby there is distinction between races, distinction between uh, tribes, and they, 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 they tended to support it because it seemed to, to be an all blacks kind of movement, which was only allowing membership from the black community and never from, from the white liberals, uh, which were part of NUSAS before. So, but it later on gained traction. And when this philosophy gained traction in, in the South African communities, in the townships and the, in the schools, it, it became sort of, uh, to be, it started to be viewed as a subversive kind of movement by the apartheid regime. And um, they started to view him as a threat and they then started to try by all means to oppress that uh, mentality because it was the mentality that brought about that black pride, you know, 
that we are humans, we are equals, we are all both capable. But it's only that others are having more so-called success by virtue of them being privileged. And he was against that kind of system whereby a lot of African movements were trying to be part of a system, to be co-opted into the system, so to speak. He was not for the co-option. He was for a complete revolution, a complete regard of the African person as, as he is, that is, as they are having their rights being respected, having their person being secure, having the person of being an African, being not only secure, but only and but also sustained, but also educated, but also decolonized. In other words, would would would, would like to view it as he as as him being a proponent of a decolonized mindset, so to speak.